Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another politics related video. And what we're going to do in this video is basically I'm going to go through and give you sort of a list of my primary sources of news and information. And this is sort of a follow up to a similar video we put out in 2016 where I did the same thing where I went through and I sort of gave you guys a list of sort of my trusted sources of news and information. And after that, we sort of uh, did a live stream, we went, did the same thing, and I sort of went through some of the websites and stuff, and the live stream we held on Twitch, right? And if you want further information on politics and politics and economics, I sort of treat in the same breath, basically. So we do have a playlist of politics and economics where you can, you know, go through and take a look at some of uh, some of the political discussion and economic discussion we've had on this channel so far and we sort of create a subcategory of that where we've talked about personal finance so if you want to know my personal take on what's going on pol politically economically those two playlists will give you a pretty good idea of what my political slants are more my political biases are right but right now what I want to do is give you uh, sort of a list of some of my primary sources of news. And these ones that I, these are basically the main ones that I actively seek out. There are other ones that I go to as well, other sources of news that I have. But these are the ones that I thought of you while we're sharing because they are the ones that I check on a regular basis, okay? And I will provide links in the description of this video and the links and names and um, the people where that we're talking about right now and you're definitely welcome to join us on twitch because every now and then we do open discussions politics like economics open discussions so you're definitely welcome to join us um, on twitch when we do have those discussions going on and i usually announce those either on twitch or well i definitely announce them on twitch or i do announce them on patreon and twitter as well okay and um, i sort of broken this down into four main categories okay the first one is basically technology related news internet related news copyright intellectual property um, the second one that we're going to go through is sort of where i get my politics and economics news and these are mainly individual individual trusted sources that i followed over the years no matter which platform they have been in okay um the fourth one we're going to take a look at is uh, some podcasts that i listen to okay and these are mainly politics related podcasts that i sort of follow okay and the fourth category that i have here is basically sort of collectives or institutions organizations that provide news and information okay so i thought i'd break it down in that form just in case you're interested in one or the other you can go directly to these sources if you would like okay um and one other thing I'm, i'll mention as well okay if you're getting your news from only one platform and there's a lot of platforms right now that are censoring information filtering information and they're not allowing a certain type of discourse dialogue to be had i highly recommend diversifying decentralizing where you get your information right because the name of the game right now is to make sure you're getting a nice spectrum of news information coming your way since there are a lot of political biases there's a lot of disinformation misinformation a lot of tremendous amount of propaganda and censorship happening on multiple platforms okay i won't start naming names but uh, i would highly recommend if you're getting your news on some of the main western social media sites that you diversify and actively seek out political and economic news if you're seriously interested in that information okay so i thought i'd give you uh this list for the first category of uh, news that I seek out, 
which is basically technology related, uh, information related to copyright, intellectual property, trade deals, and how they're going to affect uh, the internet and the way we consume information, right? Uh, I only have one main trusted source that I go to, and that's Michael Geist. And I will provide links in the description of this video to everything that we talk about, right? And he has one main websites where he posts his take. He writes articles, fairly in-depth articles, dealing with some of the issues that we're dealing with right, right now regarding the internet, net neutrality, copyrights, intellectual property, or whatever technology is related. And in a big way, how the trade deals that are taking place right now, they're going to affect the way we are able to access the internet. Okay. Uh, very, very well informed uh, individual with fantastic articles that he puts out. Okay. Uh, he is Canadian based, just to let you know, he is Canadian based, but in regards to Europe, Canada, and the United States, how certain laws are going to affect us he is the only source that i 100 percent trust okay as far as uh, straight up politics and there is some economics here as well but straight up politics that i go to the sources that i actively check out on a regular basis um, and for those of you who've seen the previous video that we put out there are some that i've taken out of this my regular routine where I check out news because they've I found them to be extremely biased in one way or the other or outright <laughs> outright lying in some cases so I sort of stopped filtered some of that news sources that I used to go to if you've seen the previous video okay in regards to politics and economics Caitlin Johnson okay she's uh fairly recent in the last couple of years she's been uh, or last year really she's hit my radar uh, she writes fantastic specifically geopolitics related articles well worth reading well worth reading okay. another place where i get information uh, as much as i can from them they're not releasing information very rapidly very frequently anymore and I would have mentioned this in the previous video as well and previous videos as well. Okay. And this is Juice Media. You guys would have known them when I mentioned them as rap news, where they used to do rap news sort of casts for 10, 15 minutes or so. They were fantastic, right? But they sort of changed their platform or changed the way they're communicating information. And they've sort of started creating short sort of advertisements that are honest advertisements from governments fantastic it's got a lot of humor in it and uh sometimes they are tear jerkers okay so juice media and i mainly check out their youtube channel okay that's where they're uploading a lot another person that i've mentioned before uh well worth checking out is paul craig roberts he's been in politics for a very long time through the 1970s even right he served on the reagan administration in the 1980s and he's uh, very direct and open with the way he perceives the world to be right now. Well worth checking out. And I'm, I'll mention this here right now, but I should have mentioned in the beginning of this video, is everybody that I'm listing here, it doesn't mean that I agree with their complete whole philosophy. I like the way they're presenting information. I like the way they're sharing information, the reason that they're sharing information, right? Intentions matter, right? So I don't necessarily agree with everything being said by everyone here that I'm mentioning. I just like them because I believe they are authentic, sincere, and sharing uh, what they can to the best of their abilities, okay? And that was Paul Craig Roberts. Another person that I check out, and I've been checking them out uh, for a number of years now, and I've read one of their books that they put out, and I've read numerous articles that they put out, and that's Chris Hedges. And he's got a program right now on RT, okay? And it's called On Contact, where he brings in people that he believes are important, 
okay, have a, a, something important to share, or they're involved politically or economically in some type of uh, system that he believes is worth sharing with his audience. It's basically a talk show where he interviews people and they present information. They either talk about the books that they've written, the articles that they put out, the the institutions they're involved with, right? Well worth reading. And if you want to know where Chris Hedges is at, and I've mentioned this numerous times, uh, you want to read his, not latest book, but the book, I haven't read his latest book, but I've read, read the book beforehand, what he did with Joe Sacco, which is Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt. A fantastic book, well worth reading. And that was Chris Hedges, and his show is On Contact on RT, okay? Another person that I check out, I, ch I don't check out as often now as I used to, but I used to check out uh, James Corbett, okay? And uh, the Corbett Report is his main platform where he shares information. And he puts out documentaries, he interviews people, and he does little shorts, um, does news briefings and stuff like this. There's a tremendous amount of information there. And I highly recommend checking out his website as well as checking out his BitChute and YouTube channel. He's uploading to both platforms right now. And the odds are you probably get more information through the BitChute channel since YouTube is in a big way turning out uh, to be censoring, filtering information in a way that they believe their audience is going to like. So there is a certain amount of censorship being done on YouTube. So the odds are you might find some stuff on James Corbett uh, Bitchu channel that you will most likely not find on his YouTube channel, which is sort of the way I'm approaching things as well, right? Another person that I followed, I've followed for a while now, wherever she's gone to, which is Abby Martin, okay? And her main gig has been the Empire Files, and she does artwork as well. She has a, she has a web, website where she does paintings and drawings and shares prints of her work and some original art and whatnot, right? But Abby Martin is one of the trusted people where I acquire information, right? And she has, you know, the Empire Files TV and her stuff has been censored in a big way, okay? So the frequency of information she's been able to share uh, is not as much as she was before. And she has a YouTube channel. And most of the people that I'm mentioning here they will also have Patreon uh, accounts, right? Patreon spaces. And I highly recommend following their work on Patreon as well, okay? Just the same way I do that I have a Patreon site where we're, I'm doing some crowdfunding to support the work that I'm doing. Most of these people that are sharing information, they also have Patreon accounts, as does Abby Martin and Cole Brett and um, Juice Media, okay? and for sure uh caitlin has as well i believe okay so you can follow their work on all their platform which sort of goes towards you know making sure that you're decentralized from one platform only getting your information from one source right you need to be diversified you need to decentralize if you want to really find out what's going on in the world okay no matter if you're leaning left center right or you believe that whole scale system is completely obsolete and irrelevant right another person that i follow i check out and she's on a grassroots level and a trusted source of news and information and she is fantastic and then that's uh, laura flanders and she has a website uh, laura flanders and she has the Laura Flanders show being loaded on YouTube and whatnot. And it's very grassroots. They talk about or people who are doing uh, grassroots organizations or they're involved in certain projects, affecting things on a very local basis, right? But a lot of that is scalable to other communities and whatnot. So I do, you know, make an effort to at least uh, keep track of uh, the topics she's covering and some of the people she's interviewing okay someone that i follow regarding uh geopolitics especially what's occurring in central and south america south america more so than central and asia 
and that's Pepe Escobar. Okay, and if you follow my work, you know that uh, you know I've mentioned Pepe Escobar before, as I have Laura Flanders and Abby Martin Kohler before in the rest, right? Some of the rest, anyway. But Pepe Escobar does fantastic work on reporting on what's going on with uh, the one road, one belt regarding China, what's going on in Asia with Russia, as well as South America. Well-informed articles. And he does have a personal bias, but there's a reason why he has a personal bias, as does everybody else. Right? Um, another person that I follow, and he's partnered up with someone else, and I've been following this person for a long time. And this is Max Blumenthal. And his reporting regarding what's going on uh, in terms of U.S. domestic policy, as well as U.S. foreign policy, specifically in regards to the Middle East. Okay, fantastic reporting. Trusted source of news. He's he's released some information that um, you know been the first to release some of that information that other people have been reporting on. And I basically right now follow Max Blumenthal. Uh, I follow his Twitter feed. Okay. And I follow him with the work that he's doing with Ben Norton. And Ben Norton is just recently that I've really gotten to know through uh, the project that he's working on with Max Blumenthal, which is the Gray Zone Project. Okay, And they have a website and they do in-depth articles and stuff like this. Both Max Blumenthal and Ben Norton, they do fantastic investigative reporting. And they have a podcast called The Moderate Rebel, where they talk about geopolitics and they interview people and I highly recommend following that podcast as well and I will mention it when we cover when we hit the podcast section and Ben Norton is also involved with the real news network and the real news network is something that I will mention here as well in the organizations that I've been following for a long time as well okay so Max Blumenthal and Ben Norton from the gray zone project as well as the moderate rebel Okay. Someone else I follow, if you want to know what's going on in the Middle East, specifically in regards to Palestine, Israel, Syria, and greater Middle East, Levant region, right? As well as um, domestic policy, U.S. domestic policy and foreign policy, which is Norman uh, Finkelstein. And I've followed Norman Finkelstein's work for a very long time. And I've gone to his lectures uh, or at least one lecture anyway, and I highly recommend if he's doing a presentation talk in your area, track him out, go listen to him, okay? Uh, and if you see him being interviewed on any programs, listen to him, and definitely if you're into it, follow his work, and he does have a Twitter account that you can follow his work as well, okay? Uh, very important information, okay? Another person that I just recently started following, um, and I'm basically following their Twitter feed. They're very active on Twitter. I don't go to his website. I'm reading his book right now, which is Nicholas Nassim Taleb. Okay, I like his perspective and the book that I'm going through right now, which is Skin in the Game, where we've uh, did a sort of a open discussion of Skin in the Game, sort of talking about the introduction first, you know, 50 pages of the book when we went through some of the some of the info that I came across. We did a live stream on Twitch and I sort of um, cut the, cut some of that live stream into little pieces that I loaded on on uh, YouTube and BitChute and the live stream is only available on uh, BitChute, okay? Uh, but if you wanna know who Nassim Nicholas Taleb is and if you're into reading books, I highly recommend reading Skin in the Game. I'm sort of halfway through it right now and most likely I'll give a sort of a book review when I do finish it okay and his Twitter feed is uh, is the link that I'm going to provide in the description of this video which is the main thing that I follow from him aside from reading his book okay another person that I have tremendous amount of respect for okay is Aaron Maté I came across him in Canada because of his political activity, some of the stuff that he was doing when he was going to university, when he was just getting his footing, right? And then I followed him, you know, found him to be doing some news work on Democracy Now!, okay? And then he disappeared off Democracy Now! and went to the Real News Net, okay? So he does a lot of work on the Real News Net. 
and he is active on Twitter. So I follow him on his Twitter feed and I follow him on the Real News Net where he does interviews with people. Highly recommend it. He, um, he is doing his best to make sure he's presenting as much information as possible and trying to make sure that he has the right type of information to present okay and for those of you in canada if you want to know who aaron mate is he's sorry aaron if you see this video i know you don't want the attachment there to a certain degree i, I don't think anyone really does but i do follow his work as well his father's work as well which is gabo mate and gabo mate is a local physician really uh, i believe he's a physician he's uh, and he does a lot of academic work and he's done he's done a lot of grassroots work in vancouver in canada where he's dealt with drug addicts and dealing with people with addiction and stuff like this and if you're interested in that following gabo mate's work is extremely important as well but that's not really well there is a certain amount of politics involved and economics involved in there as well okay but you will get some of that sense through some of the other uh, people that i'm sharing okay but that's who aaron mate is he's gabo mate's son and he's uh, he's come to his own in a in a big in a big way tremendous respect to him okay another person i follow and i've mentioned this person before which is uh john pilger and john pilger i don't follow his uh daily activity he really doesn't have any he presents he creates documentaries okay and year zero is one of them the um, documentary he created regarding cambodia okay and he's done a few other documentaries like i lost track of how many documentaries he's done and his he has a website that you can go to where he shares information but with john pilger what you want to do is make sure that you watch every uh, documentary that he puts out as well as many interviews that you can find from him because other other people and other organizations and newscasts right channels have interviewed john pilger so if you don't know who john pilger is find interviews with john pilger and watch his interviews and watch his documentaries and uh, follow his website the work he does on his website i check it basically once a month or so okay another person which i've been following specifically in regards to economics okay and i've mentioned him before which is uh, martin armstrong okay and he has a website called armstrong economics and i mainly follow his blog posts right i make sure i follow every blog post that he puts out and for those of you who recognize the name martin armstrong he's the person that we talked about during the video that i put out regarding automation the personal finance section of my channel right personal finance and politics economics section but it goes into the personal finance section in a big way right and the economic stuff we sort of put out a video regarding automation and i reference martin armstrong's article that he put out called behind the curtain where he shared his story regarding what happened to him in the 1980s with wall street and how he uh, wrote code to automate trading and start getting some triggers and he has a program running on his website called socrates where you know data is fed into the program and he you know automated uh, alerts are given regarding certain events specifically politics but politics and economics occur uh, sorry specifically economics but politics and economics occur you know they go hand in hand so there's certain triggers that he talks about and his blog is well worth following and i'll say this again i don't agree with everything everyone that i'm listing says but i like their take i want to be informed about their perspective and about their biases that way i can take that information and use it the way i interpret what's happening in the world right another person uh, show that i've been following for the last year or so is the jimmy door show fantastic follow it very good very well informed uh it has this funny aspect there's a fair bit of humor in there they bring people to interview okay uh, well worth following i don't watch everything in its entirety but i do check his youtube channel 
Okay, I know I don't know. Hopefully he's got something going on with the shoot as well. I don't think so. Not yet. He will at some point. Uh, okay, but uh, anybody covering politics at some point will have to make sure they have a BitChute channel as well. But I check out mainly his YouTube channel. Okay, so the Jimmy Dore Show. Another person that I follow specifically in regards to Canada, and I check her check out her website uh, at least once a week right uh, three or four times a month okay and depending on what's going on and she re mainly blogs about Canada but she does cover geopolitics as well and a lot of stuff happening in the United States okay and she's an individual and I've known her for a long time okay um, we got in touch we sort of linked up back in the mid 2000s when I was blogging on my site doing a lot of politics what she's doing um, uh, where I sort of decided to deviate and you know stop that type of blogging and sharing information and create content like this more okay but she's stuck to it she took a break for a little period but stuck to it and she's uh, Corinne Allen okay and she blogs under Yaya Canada okay and I'll provide the link in the description of this video and her you know her main story is basically um, she's a senior citizen citizen a grandmother and cares about what's going on uh, politically in canada and globally okay and if you're a canadian she is definitely one person one perspective you should be following i'll say this straight up really okay i got a couple of three other people here that i follow okay uh, not everything they put out but i do check out their channels just to see what it is they're covering okay one of them is sargon of akkad okay i do follow his work on uh, youtube and he has a bitchu channel as well and i'm going to start following him a little bit more than i have in the past i like the interview he did with uh, bannon uh, he put out like three weeks ago or so right and i've checked out his some of his work previously in some of the interviews he's done and stuff like this uh and suffice it to say i don't agree with everything he says but i think he has a legitimate perspective and it is worth knowing about and it is worth paying attention to because some of the points being made are very very valid points right so sargon of akkad uh, and definitely follow his work on bitchute as well because just recently in the last few days patreon has uh, kicked them off their platform and I believe PayPal has is preventing transactions to be made for him okay he's he's fairly big he has a huge following uh, but both patreon and PayPal have censored him have banned him from their platforms so if some of these main huge platforms uh, especially in regards to funding uh, if they're preventing people from being funded to share their work I tend to follow their work a little bit more okay not all of them but Sargon of Akkad I will be following more okay uh, another person that I've just recently started following is stick uh, sticks hexen hammer 66 okay he has a YouTube channel he has a bitchu channel he has a patreon page I'm not following his patreon stuff but I am following him on bitchu and YouTube and most likely I'm going to start following him more on BitChute and YouTube because the odds are uh, they're playing with fire both Sargon of Akkad in regards to YouTube channel anyway and Stick6 and Hammer66 right which is okay you can play with fire if you like because they're a disruptive innovation as we talked about in personal finance economics as soon as certain institutions certain powers that be those who pre-order our society some of the stuff that we talked about regarding um, economics specifically when it came to differential accumulation pre-order and capitalist power some of the information that we've come across we've talked about with Jonathan Nitzan um, in regards to economics right as soon as certain institutions those who pre-order society they start trying to prevent information from being shared disruptive innovation comes into play and new 
ways of being, new ways of sharing information are given life, right? Disruptive innovation and big shoot is one of them, right? Another person that I just recently started following on the same level, well, I don't want to say on the same level as Sargon and uh, uh, Styx, but uh, because I haven't followed them long enough, to know what their take is, but I'm following the videos that they're putting it out, putting out, which is Mouthy Buddha. Okay, and they it's basically the YouTube channel that I've been keeping track of. Okay. Uh, and I like some of the shorts that they're putting out, some of the information that they're putting out. I know uh, again I don't agree with everything, but it is sincere, authentic, honest information presented the best way they can. There is no other agenda as far as I can tell from the people that I've listed here including the last three or all of them really okay now those are the individuals I consider those people sort of be uh, sort of solo operators presenting information or whatnot or working together with one or two other people okay where I get my politics and like economics and news as for podcasts, because people have been asking me, you know, if there's doing the live streams I've been doing on Twitch, the politics, economics, live streams I've been doing on Twitch, right? And you're welcome to join those live streams that we do, sort of open discussion where we do a live stream. We're talking about politics, economics, and whatnot, and people start sharing information and chat, and we sort of try to figure out what's going on politically, both locally domestically and globally foreign policy as well as economics right you're welcome to join those on twitch and one thing that's been happening during those live discussions people have been asking me about uh, if there's any podcast that i listen to okay so here's four that i've put together for you one of them as i mentioned in the people that i trust the information that i trust is uh, the moderate rebel radio.com and that's max blumenthal and ben norton creating that content so i do follow their work i don't listen to everything here that i'm mentioning but i do check out what it is they're talking about and i sometimes skip through the podcast that they're doing if i'm not listening to its entirety okay so max blumenthal and ben norton on moderate rebel radio.com Another one that I check out as often as I can, which is the Global Research News Hour. And Global Research has been around for a long time. It's, it should be, you know, it will be, I believe I listed it in, you know, the institutions, organizations that I follow when they're sort of aggregating news, right? But I do follow their news hour as well, their podcast. They don't put it out as often as, as I would like. They are on the radio as well, right? So if you're following co-op radio and certain university news channels, the Global Research News Hour might pop up, right? There are people sharing that information there as well. But they do have a section which is sort of podcast where they talk about foreign and domestic foreign policy, both for Canada and the United States. Uh, well worth checking out. Well worth checking out, okay? Another podcast that I recently started following is Intercepted with Jeremy Scahill, Scahill, okay? And his podcast is available on theintercept.com, right? And I do follow The Intercept for some of their blog posts, some of the articles that they write, um, specifically Glenn Greenwald, okay? I follow that work, and Jeremy Scahill, if he, if he shares any, any information, okay? And Matt Talabi is actually, actually really good from Rolling Stone as well. And I believe he also posts his articles on The Intercept as well, okay? But if you go to their podcast section, the podcasts are done, as far as I can tell, by two people. One of them is Jeremy Scale. Jeremy Scahill's work, I follow the podcast. I try to anyway, as many of them as possible. There's another person there that I've come across that does podcasts, which is Mehdi Hassan. I stay away from his podcast. I found him creating content which is extremely biased and not sincere and being presented from the perspective of someone or institutions that are backing him up or 
institutions that he's connected with connected with i don't believe that everything that mahdi hassan has to say is everything that he fully believes in i believe it is secondhand information that is being uh, recommended to share okay jeremy scahill i trust right now 100 percent. okay so if you want to follow a political podcast jeremy scale is fantastic on the intercepted another person that i follow uh not as often as i used to in the past but he's well worth mentioning he's sincere he's honest and that's the richie allen show okay he's um he made it on my permanent radar because his channel was being banned uh you know i think his channel got his one of his channels got killed on youtube but it was on there and he came back on there and he has his own website where he podcasts his uh he does a lot of podcasts so i don't follow everything but i do uh, check his site you know once or twice a month just to see where he's at right so i sort of touch base with him uh the richie allen show okay as far as institutions go the I sort of categorize this not as individuals just because they have an institution backing them up it could be their own institutions that they've come up with okay or organizations uh, one of the places that I check everything they put out every YouTube video they put out they're not on BitChute yet okay and they do have a website which is the Ron Paul Liberty report okay I have tremendous amount of respect for Ron Paul even though I don't agree with everything he has to say okay huge respect okay uh, so the Ron Paul Liberty report I follow his work on YouTube and hopefully I haven't found their work on BitChute yet hopefully at some point they'll create a BitChute account and start sharing that information there as well and they do have a website called uh, Ron Paul Liberty report I don't go there very often I mainly follow all their videos like literally I watch everything from beginning to end 99% of what they put out 95% of what they put out okay from beginning to the end all the way to the end where Ron Paul does his same ending and all of a sudden he sometimes ends abruptly his thought and ends what he's saying right sincere information and that's the best thing you can do if you're trying to seek out economic and political news is to seek out people who are sharing information to the best of their abilities okay and Ron Paul Liberty Report trusted authentic news another place I go to is the real news network and I've been following the real news network since they came online from like day one okay back in the day in the mid 2000s when they came out I even wrote a blog post about the real news network coming up and they actually linked my blog post recommending their news channel <laughs> on my site to their site right at the time when i was blogging i was getting a fair bit of traffic so i guess i made their radar right but the real news net i follow their work i don't check out all the videos they do but i do check out all the content that they're putting out and if i'm interested in the topic that they're covering i watch their interviews that they do and they mainly do interviews they do a little bit of compiling information as well but it's mainly interviews that they're doing sharing a little bit of information doing a little introduction and then interviewing so someone who has skin in the game in whatever it is that the topic that they're covering right so i check out all the topics that they're putting out and i do check out certain videos that i'm interested in or certain videos that i don't know any information on okay because they do provide fantastic information both politics economics environmental as well a lot of environmental another place that I've been checking the news out for a long time I was checking them out for a long time since early mid 1990s or let's say late 1990s right and I stopped following them for a year or so a year and a bit after Trump or even during the 2016 election I wasn't following them too much because I found their information to be extremely biased and I didn't like what I was seeing they were leaning 
in one way. They, were, they weren't doing a fair job of presenting information. But recently I've started following them again a little bit. I'm not checking everything, okay? And that's democracy now. And one of the things I do, I sort of check out the little news summaries they do maybe once, twice a week, okay? If something dramatic is happening, maybe I check it out three, four times a week. I don't check out anything they do really too much in regards to US domestic policy because I find them to be too biased. They're, they're caught up in the loop of who tweeted what, which is ridiculous, right? So I don't, I don't follow their work in regards to US domestic policy too much, uh, but I do try to follow their work with their, what they cover in regards to US foreign policy and geopolitics in general, what's going on in the Middle East, some stuff in South America, um, some stuff in Asia and Europe or Eastern Europe and stuff like this. Basically, I follow their work, democracy now to a certain degree of anything they're talking about other than US domestic policy, okay? Another organization, institution, or sort of talk show that I follow is Crosstalk, okay? Crosstalk is an RT. It's sort of a basically 20 minute, 25 minute or 35 minute, sort of half an hour round table where they talk about foreign policy, okay? And it's Peter Laval that is hosting it. And I follow everything Crosstalk is putting out, okay? Same with uh, Chris Hedges. I follow everything Chris Hedges is putting out. I follow everything Ron Paul is putting out. And I follow all the round table discussions that they put out in regards to the TV program called Crosstalk, hosted on RT. Well worth knowing, especially for anyone in Canada, United States, uh, since a lot of information that they're sharing is not presented anywhere else unless you're getting your information from some of the sites that I've already mentioned, because it won't be on anything uh, mainstream corporate broadcast channels in Canada, United States. Right, you the odds are you won't hear that perspective, and there's important perspective to be had. Okay, as I mentioned, I go to the intercept not often. I go there and I sp specifically go there to listen to a podcast by Jeremy Scahill, or I go there to read articles by Green, uh, Glenn Greenwald. Okay, sometimes I seek out, I read articles by Jeremy Scahill. Well, Jeremy Scahill, yes. But some of the other people that I might know, some people that write articles there, I do not read at all because uh, I don't trust them. And one of them being Mahidi Hassan. Okay. Uh, don't follow his. I've looked at some stuff he's done, just cringeworthy. <laughs> okay. Another site, website I go to, to that. Uh, I try to go there at least two to three times a month aside from listening to the podcast is Global Research, okay, Global Research TV. They do have a YouTube channel. The YouTube channel doesn't get updated very often. They're mainly focused on putting out articles uh, related to geopolitics. Uh, well worth checking out, well worth checking out, okay. Uh, a perspective you will not be getting through mainstream propaganda sources. Another place uh, that I get information from that I check out what articles they're putting out. I don't read everything. I don't read many of the articles, but I do read some of them, which is Tom Dispatch. Uh, Tom Dispatch, he's been around for a long time. This is his website. And he does a little intro and he, he has the rights to uh, print a lot of the articles being put out by a lot of uh, important people. A lot of people who have a certain skin in the game regarding certain topics. So there's a lot of articles by a lot of different people on Tom Dispatch, okay? Uh, worth checking out, worth, worth checking out. Long articles in general, okay? Another place that I've been checking out, and this place I've been checking out since the 1980s, really, okay? And that's Alternative Radio, okay? So alternativeradio.org, and it's Alternative Radio but by David Barsamian, okay? They do have a website, you can go to their website, and uh, unfortunately, they don't share openly all the lectures, all the 
interviews or lectures that they've had because they're mainly a radio broadcaster and if you've if you've listened to co-op radio uh, alternative radio or radio broadcast for universities and stuff you would have come across alternative radio by david barsami on sort of an hour podcast to a certain degree it should be considered a podcast but i haven't followed them in the podcast format i listen to the interviews that they do and just to let you know the first time i ever heard i ever interacted with alternative radio was in the 1980s where i believe it was 1980s or it could have been early 1990s where i ordered i had to write down do i was listening to them on the radio okay I, it wasn't the internet i was listening to them on the radio and they were doing a lecture presenting a lecture by philip Agi. he was a cia uh, sort of a hitman economic hitman that sort of became a whistleblower and once he became a whistleblower he had to escape the united states otherwise he would have been suicided and he went to cuba and I'm, i don't think this lecture i believe this lecture i don't know where it was being given but philip Agi was at the time in cuba where he, where he was giving this lecture okay it was either in cuba or europe or wherever it was he was giving this interview or lecture that i was listening to and i found it extremely intriguing it was a lecture about cuba what the history of the u.s foreign policy has been with cuba so i quickly you know wrote down because it was on the radio i listened to it and i brought pen and paper at during the middle you know david bar interrupts the lectures and he says you can order tapes and stuff through you know they can send checks and stuff so and i remember going to a bank and getting a money order for alternative radio putting an envelope sending it out mailing it out and having a tape come to me of that lecture that philip Agi gave and i listened to that lecture again with a tape and i still have that tape alternative radio really if you want to know what's the long game in regards to economics and politics globally domestically right alternative radio just start listening to the lectures if you've never been exposed to it very very important okay and the last website institution organization that i've listed here which is extremely extremely important which is a which is basically the only website online where we know that everything that they're sharing is 100 percent accurate 100 percent fact right that's a huge huge title to have the only place online where if you do a search and they have a search ability if you do a search whatever comes up is 100 percent accurate really nobody can say this and that's wikileaks right wikileaks is extremely important it is the most important website that we have right now without a doubt without a doubt okay its survival is crucial i'll link it up to the survival of you can you can fill in the blank if you want right i could go extreme on this but wikileaks is to me the most important website online because what they're doing is providing transparency for us right for individuals citizens human beings right they're giving us transparency to our governments to corporations right as the saying goes i believe this is something that jonathan Nitzan, um, with differential accum accumulation um, capital is power pre-ordering society with those in power right and i believe wikileaks and assange and other people have mentioned this as well right that those who pre-order society those with power in society the power to govern right to dictate how our society evolves those people those institutions must have transparency individuals me and you those of us who do not wield that type of power to mold society the way we choose we deserve 
a tremendous amount of privacy, right? Right? Anonymity. But institutions, organizations, those in power must have, must provide transparency. And WikiLeaks does that for us, right? Extremely important website, which is one of the reasons why one of the ASMR sort of soft spoken whispering videos that we did was reading one of the most important leaks that came out of one of the most important bits of information on WikiLeaks, which was Vault 7, right? We did a sort of a whisper soft spoken reading in front of this fireplace, I believe, of Vault 7, right? Reading that release. And you can follow that. Go to the website, WikiLeaks website and take a look at vault 7 do a search for vault 7 and what we read is just one chunk there's a lot of information connected to that as well right and wikileaks being as important as it as it is as far as i'm concerned we will be just to let you know we will be doing more readings from wikileaks as well either soft spoken and whisper in asmr format the way we did with vault 7 okay so just in case i'll put this out there right now if you do access wikileaks and if you have information any of the because there's a tremendous amount of information there right if you know of any of the leaks that are well worth reading post comments in the description of this video and uh, preferably putting chunks the leaks directly providing to the pages where the leaks are available where we can do a full-on reading from beginning to the end and put out more content regarding some of the most important information that is available online and making it more accessible to people right because i know wikileaks can be hard to navigate and from my experience i found that many people who would have had a lot of their questions answered if they had just gone to wikileaks and read some of the leaks some of the more important leaks that they've released such as the collateral damage video um, from uh, uh, regarding iraq and vault 7 for sure and many of the other leaks right a lot of people have never read that information which is unfortunate if anyone is talking about politics or geopolitics domestically as well as foreign policy and stuff like this right so for us to make that information more available if you know of any leaks that are available on wikileaks that you think would be phenomenal for soft spoken or whisper type of video the way we did with vault 7 please post the links to wikileaks directly in the description of this video and we'll take a look and maybe we'll start a discussion in youtube or on bitshoot and uh see what we can put together and create more content like this especially the information that is um that uh, sort of pre-orders our society which is certain institutions and organizations those in power that are uh, doing to make sure that the playing field is uh uh the world works in a way that is more preferable to them than being just and equal and uh, uh, beneficial for all of us instead of just a small segment of society okay uh, aside from that uh, those are some of my main news sources and uh, the odds are we'll probably do another video like this in a couple of years two or three years and maybe filter out some of the some of the people we've noted here and introduce new sources of information right because everything is in flux right now aside from that uh thank you for being here uh thank you for hanging around if you like this work uh please consider subscribing uh following liking and if you can afford it please consider uh, supporting this work on patreon because with that support we can roll out a lot of other things that uh, we have planned to do okay that's it for now, and I'll see you guys in the next video.